My name is Brooke Ferguson, and I'm going to take you on a journey through this episode of Music Curious to talk to you about my favorite instrument, the flute. The very first flute known was dug up on an archaeological dig in Germany in a cave, and its carbon date was from 35,000 years ago, which was in the middle of the Stone Age. So it was made of what? Can you guess? This flute, this 35,000 year old flute, was made of bone, animal bone. And they took the bone and they carved holes in the bone up and down and carved out the middle. And then at the very top, they carved in a place to blow and they made what was known as the first flute. Now, the best example I have of this, I'm about to show you, but it's actually from the late 14th century, which, you know, was a while ago, obviously. This is called the recorder. Now, the recorder predates the modern flute by a couple of centuries. And what's fascinating about it is it's the same concept as the bone flute I was telling you, the carved out holes and the top. This is what's known as a whistle mouthpiece makes a little whistle. So you put the whistle mouthpiece on the pipe and that has the holes in it and you can change the pitch. And this is a song that I can play for you on the recorder. It's this land. Now, it's a little bit limited in how many notes you can play. And so I want to tell you about how that changed to the modern flute. So before we went to this type of flute, there was another type of wooden flute that was made. And if you can imagine it, it had one key on the very end and, and you played it to the side. So it didn't have a whistle mouthpiece. It has a mouthpiece like the modern flute. And this is a modern flute mouthpiece. And that's a whistle mouthpiece. Now, on this, you blow across the hole with an air jet. But it's basically a whistle. It's the same idea. The difference is that the air leaves your lips and hits the inside edge of the flute, which makes a vibration. So slightly different, but kind of the same idea. So before they made these modern flutes, they made those one key flutes that were played to the side. And those were called traversos, and those were used to play the music of Johann Sebastian Bach and other Baroque composers. Now, flutists became a little bit discouraged by only having one key on their flute. So inventors in Vienna, Austria, and London, UK, were trying to make flutes that had more keys on them to make them easier to play and to make them have more variety in terms of the notes and to make them more in tune to sound better. So they were experimenting with adding keys. But then a Bavarian flutist and inventor named Theobald Bohm really hit it out of the park and gave the flute a major upgrade. He figured out how to put holes in the flute and above them put these separate keys and he would string them onto the flute like this. And what he figured out was how to make a chromatic scale, which is one where you can play all of the 12 pitches in order. Here's a chromatic scale. I wanted to tell you about the recorder, the traverso, how Bohm in introduced us to this new flute with a chromatic scale. And now I want to tell you a little bit about what my flute is made of. You'll see these different things are made out of different things, different materials. This is made out of wood, obviously, as were the earliest recorders. This is made, you can see, it has silver and gold. Now, this is made of brass, and this is made of wood. Now, the metals that you see here are formed from alloys. Now, I don't know if you know the word alloy, but basically, I know you know about volcanoes 
And if you imagine volcanic lava, if you take solid metal and you heat it up to that temperature of lava into a molten state, then you can mix metals and then form them into pipes. And that's what this is. That's how these are made. And making flutes of metal instead of out of wood makes them louder and it makes them brighter. So we as flutists, with the one key flute I was telling you about, could not make very much sound. And as this flute improved, we began to make a more vibrant and louder sound. A symphony orchestra is a very modern idea in the grand scheme of music history. Now, a flute in the modern orchestra is made of metal, like I said, but it's a member of the woodwind family. And because obviously the very earliest versions were made of wood. So it's the same idea. So we play with oboe, clarinet, and bassoon in our woodwind block. So now I'm going to get a little deeper into what goes on in the flute section. Uh, what instruments do we play? So you've seen me holding this flute mostly. This is what's known as a C flute. This is the standard instrument played in the flute section. This is the instrument that Beethoven wrote most of his symphonies for. This is the instrument that Mozart wrote all of his symphonies for that include the flute. So this is the, the C flute is the sort of standard flute used in the orchestra. So I'm going to give you a demonstration of uh, what a C flute sounds like. It has a beautiful singing sound. It's not very high, it's pretty high, but it has a drama to the sound that I think these two instruments here have a different character, and I'll tell you about those when I demonstrate them. But just think of this one as being colorful and dramatic. So I'm going to play for you When You Wish Upon a Star. So that's the way the C flute sounds. Now, you might be seeing this big flute here, and that might make you very curious. This big flute is called an alto flute, and it sounds much lower than the C flute I just played you. Uh, the alto flute is also known as the G flute, and it is warm, and it is very mellow in the way that it plays. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration of the sound of the alto flute. This is Rafi's Baby Beluga. So that's the alto flute, the mellow, beautiful, big alto flute. Now in the orchestra, this is only used some of the time. And as you can hear, it's a very unique color. And so it's used in, in very specific ways in different pieces. And it's usually very mysterious moments and very soft and very beautiful. So now we move on to an entirely different character altogether. And this is, I think, the littlest sibling of the flute family. Look how small it is. And its name is the piccolo. And the piccolo is high and it's very loud. And it's amazing because it can be played very beautifully and project over the entire orchestra. 
which is just really fantastic. I love playing it. Uh, I play mainly C flute in the orchestra. From time to time, I get to play piccolo. But I do want to tell you how it sounds. It has a very uh, crisp character, a very, it's very perky, and it is definitely very outspoken. So here is on the piccolo, box Bagnieri from the Sweet and B minor. I'm sure you might have questions about some of the things that I mentioned to you today. So if you do have questions, email our education department at the Colorado Symphony and I will get back to you with my answers. In the meantime, thank you for tuning in. I hope your school year is safe and healthy and happy. And please stay curious and be in touch. Thank you very much. Bye.